In every Elder Scrolls game, you start as a prisoner. It's the perfect setup for a role-playing character, providing a blank slate that you can fill in however you see fit. But what if I wasn't creative at all and just wanted to use the cards I was dealt? Can you beat Skyrim as a prisoner? So let's go over the rules. What does being a prisoner build entail? Well, here are the rules that I've set out for myself. I can only wear the rough spun tunic and foot wraps that you start the game wearing. No other armor, just what your character spawns with. I will give an exception to some jewelry just because I'm going to be using a little enchanting in this run and it doesn't add any armor value. But that leads to the question, what weapon should a prisoner use? Well, really, there's only one correct answer. A shiv. So that's it. Prisoner clothes and a shiv. Let's begin the run. Pretty normal ride into Helgen. The game looks super pretty due to the power of mods, but other than that, the game is vanilla when it comes to gameplay. Don't worry. I make my character an orc for the sole reason of their racial ability, Berserker Rage. The shiv does a base damage of 5. For context, the Iron Sword, which is the first weapon you are given in the game if you side with Hadvar, has a base damage of 7. So for the beginning of this run after I get my weapon, I'm going to be stuck with a metal pokey stick that is outclassed by everything you can pick up in Helgen. Great. I just run past all the enemies until I'm out into the open world, but I make sure to loot as many bodies from the keep as possible to sell off and make some extra coin. I'm going to need that coin, because I'm heading straight for Markarth. Now if you didn't know, which I wouldn't blame you because who the fuck uses a shiv in this game except for Nurbit, they can only really be found in the Markarth Jail Sidna Mine. Technically, according to the wiki, you can buy them after the Sidna Mine quest is completed in Markarth, but that's not super useful to me. So, I've gotta land myself in jail in Markarth. Now, I could just do this by punching a guard or stealing or something, but that's boring. So, I'm going to do what in my opinion is one of the best quest lines in the game. The Forsworn Conspiracy. When I enter Markarth, I see this dude named Waylon use a lady as an impromptu weapon rack, which was a nice warm welcome. This guy comes up to me and asks if I'm alright, and slips a note into my pocket asking me to meet him at the Talos Shrine in town. He's a bit of a sleuth and doesn't like corruption. Lame. So he gets me to do a little detective work for him around town to get to the bottom of these cover-ups. So I go and ask around and do a little thievery until this guy wants to beat me up for sticking my nose around in other people's business. But I'm a YouTuber, so I don't take people's advice. And much like an apology video, I ignore the problem of this guy swinging at the back of my skull until I reach this inn. Eventually, the dude behind me just stops. Then, before you know it, some guy's wife dies, he spills the tea, and I'm back to Eltree to tell him what's happening. Well, the guards decided to give this detective an early retirement, and they blame it on me. Now, would you look at that? I'm a prisoner again! This is my natural habitat, so it didn't take me long to get a shiv into my hands, deal some skooma, and blow this joint with a bunch of terrorists. Hell yeah. Now I've got my two shivs and the hessian sack on my back, it's finally time to start tackling the main quest. I head straight to Whiterun and tell the Jarl what's up, and before long I'm sent to everyone's favourite dungeon, Bleak Falls Barrow. On the way there, I make a stop by this tower and perform the Drop the Soap special on these bandits. I can't believe I wrote that into this script. Oh god, fourth wall break. The dungeon went overall surprisingly smoothly, although to be fair I am on level 1. With the way leveling works in this game, the enemies in the world become more powerful as your character levels up. Well, in a normal run, that would result in a balanced experience, but in case you haven't caught on yet, I'm going to be wearing a potato sack and two sharpened metal toothbrushes for this entire playthrough. So, the more that I level up by using these things, the more difficult this challenge is going to become. Overall, Bleak Falls goes pretty well. I died to the spider, but that's what we like to call a skill issue, so I'll just skim past that. And before too long, I killed the Overlord and got the Dragonstone. Now I'm back at Whiterun, I decide it's a good idea to finally get myself a little extra damage. I bought some soul gems and put a frost enchantment on my shiv, making it do an extra 10 points of frost damage which was super useful. I very creatively called it Shiver. Anywho, now it's time to fight the first dragon. It got pretty tense, and had some very near death experiences that nearly took me out. But hey, with the minor help of an army of guards, I was able to take it down. After this, I just ignore their pleas to hear me shout and head straight for Dragon's Reach. Now I'm the Thane of Whiterun, so that's neat. I denied Lydia's advances because I feel like having followers is cheap in this playthrough, and start my journey to High Hrothgar. I start going through the mountains near Helgen, and then I decide to commit Grand Theft Auto on this poor hunter and steal her horse. 
From here I just go straight to Ivorstead, but when I talk to Keemstar here, the horse I stole ran away, so I guess I have to go up the mountain by myself. All goes pretty well, and I professionally avoid this frost trial like the scared little boy I am. After talking to the Greybeards, I start my journey towards Ustengrav. When I get there, I manage to take out the Necromancer quickly, so outside of the dungeon wasn't too much of an issue. Inside, however, these Draugr gave me a run for my money. I died quite a few times, but after this, all goes fairly well considering I'm about as powerful as this guy from Sydney Mine. I grab the note-shaped horn and head back to Riverwood to get the real deal from Delphine. Then before long, I was taking a cart to Windhelm so we can kill a dragon. When I got there though, Alduin decided to Fusro Dami down a fucking mountain. Thanks, man. Also, if you're wondering why everything is in first person and I can see my body when I look down, that's all because of an amazing mod called Improved Camera. Seriously, check it out. It's compatible with everything and looks super cool if you guys are into first person stuff. After my little slip trip and fall though, the dragon wasn't too difficult, especially because this one in particular lets you do a bunch of damage while he's coming back from the dead. So yeah, free dragon soul. Now that I've thoroughly impressed Delphine, it's time for some espionage in the Thalmor Embassy. I take a cart to Solitude, strip completely nude and give all my earthly possessions to Malborn before going to Delphine and putting on these terrible party clothes. Once I get there, I make sure to let Elwyn know that I am in fact a prisoner, and then I cause a distraction and get my good old sack and wraps back along with my pokey sticks. The sneaking part is over now, so let's get to stabbing. Honestly, the embassy wasn't too bad. I did die a couple times in the last room, but overall, after that I even killed the frost troll and for the first time ever, I saved both Malborn and the other prisoner dude. Overall, pretty good success. After a quick catch up with Delphine, it's time to go save Esburn from the sewers, but before that, I go to Whiterun to sell off a bunch of loot that I got from dragons and the embassy. Adrian here was trying to riz me up by the looks of it, like, damn girl, your husband is just behind those doors. I'd settle down. Then Bellathor tells me about his sister while I put him out of business, and before long, I'm taking a trip to Riften. Of course, I already know where Esburn is, so I'm not going to bother talking to Brynjolf and getting looped up in Thieves' Guild quests. All goes pretty well as expected, and before long I've killed a bunch of them damn knife ears and I go back to Riverwood with this old man following me like a toddler. Not that toddlers really follow me. Th that is a figure of speech, right? Maybe lost puppy would have been better wording. Oh god. Moving swiftly on from that, it's now time to go to Skyhaven Temple. I travel back to Markarth and basically head straight there. I wouldn't say I'm quite equipped to deal with a blood dragon and an army of Forsworn right now, or realistically at any point during this run, so I just go straight into the cave and mostly let Delphine and Esbird deal with the guys inside. Before too long, I'm in the temple and figure out they used a shout <gasps> to defeat Alduin. Delphine has a little tantrum about the Greybeards. Keep in mind, she's in her 50s if the Thalmor dossier has any merit to it, so come on lady, act like an adult. Either way, I go back and finally return the horn to the Greybeards, so after their little screaming match at me and being officially accepted by them, Angir gets immediately pissed at me for even mentioning the blades. Come on guys, you're too old for this shit. Anyway, I get them to let me go and see party snacks. I have to kill a few ice wraiths on the way, but now that I have a shiv that's enchanted with fire as well, it wasn't too hard. I didn't mention that before, I kind of forgot when I did it. I didn't give it a cool creative name, mostly because I just forgot to. Once I get there, I basically just skip his dialogue and go to get an Elder Scroll. I skip the part where I talk to people about where to find it, because we all know this crazy dude in the snow already knows its exact location. I talk to Septimus, and for the first time in one of these videos, actually choose to go through the Dwarven Ruins myself. The start of the dungeon wasn't too bad, but when I had to start dealing with the Falmer, it did get a little tricky. I used the Become Ethereal shout to yeet myself down this big hole, and before too long I reached this big area where there were Falmer and a Centurion I had to take down. This didn't really work out well for me, so after a long struggle I decided to sneak on top of one of these buildings and let the Centurion take out the Falmer for me, and they did take out its health a little as well, so that's nice. After that I could kind of circle around the Centurion and I managed to kill it before it could really hurt me, which was a nice change of pace compared to what I just went through. These two start an argument, so I killed them both. I got down to dangerously low HP, but I managed to take him out before I bit the bullet. Now it's time for Black Reach. Hooray! I actually took my time here, and explored around the place a lot more than I usually do. I even collected a bunch of the Crimson Gnome Root. 
I had no intention of finishing the quest, but it was kind of fun whenever I came across one. After a good while of looking around and falling down this waterfall, I decided to move on, press a bunch of random buttons, and get the Elder Scroll. Now it's time for the first fight with Alduin, which is usually the hardest fight in the game. Luckily, Dragonren staggers dragons, which was very useful for me because I could just spam him with it and keep putting pressure on. It wasn't a flawless plan, I did die quite a few times, but after about 20 minutes of attempts, I managed to kill him. And now it's time for the Peace Council. I'm gonna skip this bit, it's boring and I know you don't want to see it. But now it's time to trap a dragon and get him to fly me away. I think he got the wrong guy at first because this guard got taken for a ride straight to Sovereign Guard, but he's not the Dragonborn, so I doubt it's what he had planned for the day. I trap him, let Farangar get the shit scared out of him, and next thing you know I'm going for a ride to Skullduffin. This place sucks. There's too many Draugr and too many quote-unquote puzzles that do nothing but slow you down. I did manage to skip this one by just whirlwind sprinting across, so that was nice at least. But then once I got out, I beelined it straight to the portal before this zombie with a mask could close it. One of these days I'll actually fight everyone here and get the mask, but today is not that day. Once I reach Sovereign Guard, I get my ass whooped by soon a couple times, but after a bit I manage to hit him enough times to make him chill with me. He's like Benor from Morthal. <laughs> After waiting for these old warriors to stop talking random bullshit and making sure to steal all of their food, it's now time for the final fight with Alduin. It was fine, overall. I mean, realistically, it's just the first fight, except you have three other people fighting with you, so it was basically written in stone that I would defeat him. I mean, I am the Dragonborn, and it is my destiny, but well, whatever. And so, just like that, I beat Skyrim as a prisoner. But there's one more thing I have to do. Once I go back to Tamriel, I go straight to Whiterun and punch a guard. Of course, I could use my Thane status to get him to turn the other cheek, but I think it's fitting that I finish this run the same way I started it, as a prisoner. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit those buttons that everyone else tells you to hit all the time, and huge thank you to all of my channel members for the amazing support. And most importantly, have a wonderful day.